Welcome to Social Justice and Community Engagement, a program that shares the efforts of the Division of Institutional Equity and Diversity at the University of North Texas to facilitate access, equity, and inclusion for the UNT and surrounding Denton community. I am Shani Barracks Moore, UNT Director of Diversity and Inclusion, and I will be your host for these conversations. The goal of our show is to create awareness about opportunities to engage with our efforts so that the UNT and Denton community can collaborate to create more inclusive and equitable living, learning, and working spaces. Today we are joined by Lenore Perlstein, founder of Insight into Diversity magazine, seen here. She will share information about the HEAT Award, which is a Higher Education Excellence and Diversity Award recently earned by the University of North Texas. This is our award that we received from Lenore today that we are very proud of. And we're going to talk about UNT's first ever climate survey for inclusion, which will be distributed to all UNT Denton students, faculty, and staff, and administrators this fall. So Lenore, welcome to Texas. Thank and you. And welcome to UNT, and we're really happy to have you here with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So you spent some time uh, with us earlier talking about the heat award and the climate survey but first just tell us a little bit about you and you know your journey into being a diversity and inclusion supporter and facilitator of these efforts so uh, I'm gonna have to go back a little bit quite a few decades um, and I'll give you a little bit of the origins of insight into diversity magazine um, to begin with um, back in the 50s and 60s and 70s as we know we had the civil rights era uh, the women's lib movement um, and the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Well, around 1974, the EEOC came out and told all colleges and universities that were government contractors that they had to start hiring affirmatively. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was that they had to hire minorities, women, and veterans. So there was a doctor at uh, George Washington Medical School. He was the head of radiology, and his name was Dr. Seymour David Rockoff. And Dr. Rockoff, his claim to fame was actually that he's the radiologist that took care of President Reagan when he was shot in mm -hmm. D.C. So he's quite, quite well known for that. Um, but Dr. Rockoff wanted to create some kind of publication to be able to do this uh, because there was nothing in existence except for the Chronicle of Higher Education and the Chronicle was not diversity related, affirmative, affirmative action related. It was just the go-to place for higher education. So Dr. Rockoff had created um, what was called back then the Affirmative Action Register, and he did this with a um, medical school journal publisher who he knew in St. Louis. And for about 30 years or so, they worked together and they had basically what was a newsletter or a job listing index. That's basically primarily what it was back then. Mm -hmm. In 2007, um, I had actually been doing the accounting. I'm, I'm a CPA by trade. I was in public accounting for almost 30 years, and I was actually doing the accounting for the Affirmative Action Register mm -hmm. from 1979 till I actually purchased it. Um, so around 2007, I got a phone call that the, um, well, Dr. Hedrockoff had retired already, and I got a phone call that the publishers had both passed away and that the publication was in the estate and they wanted to know if we knew of anyone who was interested in purchasing it because we know it was a great business. Well, at the time, growing well for me, growing up, my father's a Holocaust survivor, and I had spent many, many years going to listen to him speak to young people, um, probably in his lifetime from um, when I was around 16 years old, maybe the uh, mid-80s through today. He's probably spoken to a half a million young students, wow. mainly in um, um, inner city areas, um, mostly African American and under um, um, underrepresented students and his message was always the same he would tell them about his story give them a little bit of history of what he went through and his experience and then he would tell them you know look if I had um, you have all these opportunities if I was able to accomplish what I was what I accomplished in life then you can do it too so when you talk about you know you don't have Nike shoes or you don't have fancy shoes well I didn't have any shoes um, and so he really encouraged these kids and he would get letters from them and just he was such an inspiration to these kids, and he just recently stopped speaking, um, but he, he's just been um, an amazing role model for me over the years. And I always thought to myself, if there was ever a business that I could own, I'd want to carry on um, what he does, and, and because he was such a role model to me. And so when this, at the time, it was not quite a diversity uh, magazine yet, but I knew it was something that I could eventually, um, have, you know, it would become one. Then I was really interested in purchasing it. So to make a long story short, I had a, um, I have a partner who 
was working at the Marriott Corporation in their marketing department at the time, and our husbands are partners in the accounting firm. And so we got together and we decided we were going to bid on this business, and we did, and we won, and it's based out in St. Louis, and we kept it out there. We've got a great staff out there. Well, in 2008, right after we had purchased the business, we went into the Great Recession, as we know, and all the colleges and universities were on hiring freeze. So now this wonderful job listing index was pretty useless to us. So we had to say, okay, let's sink or swim at this point, and what do we do? And so it took about two years, but we decided we were going to turn it into a diversity and inclusion publication versus an affirmative action job listing index. And so over the next couple of years, um, we made that transformation, and it's just been um, such, we've had such an impact on college campuses that we hear all the time. And so I love what I do every day. Um, I have a reason to get up every day, and, and it's just been a, a wonderful experience for me in the second half of my life. Well, great. So obviously the HEAT Award seems to have evolved out of Insight into Diversity Magazine. So tell us about the award and why it was founded and how it's used. So the HEAT Award is, is, is the Higher Education Excellence and Diversity Award, and I created this back in 2012. I would talk to chief diversity officers daily, and they would always tell me, you know, our work is so hard, we do so much, and nobody's really recognizing what we do. Nobody's seen the value in the work that we're doing, and I knew that there was a lot of value in it in many different ways. And so I decided I was going to create some kind of award after realizing that there was nothing out there. So I worked with a number of different people and created, um, it's, it's now the only application-based diversity and inclusion award in the U.S. Um, since 2012, this is now our seventh or eighth year we've been doing it. We have also created a Health Professions Heat Award, which has been very successful. Every year we um, have more and more applications that we receive from schools all over the country. The great thing about the HEAT Award is that anybody can apply for it and anybody can receive it. We've had community colleges all the way up to large research institutions, small liberal arts schools, um, law schools, um, graduate schools, a any type of school can receive our award because of the way we take a, like a, almost a holistic process is that what we use in determining who's going to be a HEAT Award recipient. So it's grown over the years. Um, we love to tell our schools how to use the award to bring in better faculty, better students, um, more donor money, uh, more recruiters, more alumni money. It's just become a great tool for them to not only create programming on their campuses through our best practices that we talk about, but also a way to really bring in more students and better students and faculty, as I said, and to really increase the diversity and inclusion on their campus and, and become an award-winning institution. Yeah, the information you shared with us before our talk here today about how we can leverage that for uh, career connections, for our students, for admissions and recruitment, it was really, really helpful. And I think it, it, it definitely gave us some perspective on how to leverage not only our getting the HEAT Award, but our emerging status as a minority-serving, Hispanic-serving institution. So tell us why we got selected. I, I think you said that how many, how many applied and how many people received it, and what about UNT stood out? So we had over 350 applications this year, which was a record for us. We honored 96 schools. This is just the undergraduate schools for this year. We are still working on the health profession schools. Mm -hmm. So out of the 350, we honored 96. We use a, um, a sort of a complex scoring process to determine who's going to become a HEAT Award recipient. You have to have a minimum score in order for us to name you a recipient. The reason that UNT was selected is because UNT, not only do you have a lot of diversity within your campus and the numbers themselves, which is only partially what we look at, we also take a holistic approach to deciding who's going to be a HEAT award school and that we look at where you're located, the size of your school, um, other obstacles that you may have overcome in the past, and we want to see not only where you've come but where you're going. And so we look at programming as well as graduation rates, um, rates for your um, underrepresented students, the, um, um, the number of students you have here, the number of faculty um, administrators. We ask about your governing board. We ask about supplier diversity. We ask a very, it's a very all-encompassing, comprehensive application where we ask about pretty much every activity on campus. We ask about different offices that you have. And again, the reason that why we selected UNT is because not only do you have really great numbers, and as you said, you're gonna become hopefully an MSI, um, shortly, but you also have a lot of great programs in place 
for students as well as um, your faculty and your staff. They're, the employees tend to be overlooked on college campuses mm -hmm. and people generally focus on students because they feel they're their only consumers, which is really a big mistake that they make because people want to come to a college campus to work as well. You're an employer and you want to have a career here. You want to know that it's a welcoming place to stay. You want to have friends here. You want to have a social life here. And so that's why we look at all aspects of campus diversity and we feel that UNT is really have really on the road to being a, a great role model for other schools in the country, for the other 5,000 schools in the country. So that's that's why we selected your school. And we say every year, you know, we welcome you to the Heed family. We um, share best practices with you. We're going to highlight you in our magazine. We're going to talk about you to other schools as a role model for them. And we're going to continue to follow your progress. Well, we're really honored to receive the award. I know our office was working on the application. It is extremely comprehensive. And I think for us, it even helped us to better understand how diversity and inclusion is woven into our faculty, our staff, our programming. And it really helped to prime us, I think, for going into our first ever climate survey for inclusion. So it's just kind of ironic that we are working with you for the HEAT Award, right. but you're also uh, the vendor that we're using uh, for our first ever institutional climate survey for inclusion. So why don't we shift gears a little bit? Okay. And I know that uh, Viewfinder is relatively new. This is, this is a new element of your business. So tell us about Viewfinder, the climate survey tool, and, and what it's designed to do for institutions. Sure. So. As we were looking at HEAT Award applications over the years, one of the questions that we ask schools is if they've done a climate survey in the last two years, because we feel that it's important that they do them. And we want them to have a feel for the environment on campus, and the only way you're going to know is if you ask. Mm -hmm. So I knew that a lot of schools, we would ask the schools how often they were doing them and why they weren't doing them, and a lot of schools were telling us it was mainly about cost. Um, either cost or they couldn't find the right tool, that most of the tools out there were sexual assault surveys, mm -hmm and Title IX surveys, which are completely different than a climate survey, or they were student engagement surveys, which again is not a climate survey. It's about the, um, the, the environment in the classroom and the experience in the classroom. A climate survey is for everyone. You are asking questions about particular groups. You're asking them about their experiences on and off campus, whether it's in the classroom, in a dormitory, um, just walking around campus, in the community. So I wound up creating Viewfinder with around 12 chief diversity officers from different schools, different type schools, as I said, the HEAT Award schools, from community colleges, large schools, small schools, because I wanted to get a feel of the types of questions we should be asking to everybody. So it was a one instrument fits all type survey. So it took about a year, and we finally came up with a product, and we decided we were gonna have one for students, administrators, faculty, and staff, and the reason we split them into the four separate categories is because we wanted to have one s similar instrument where you could ask everybody the same question and get the s different perspectives on that same topic. So for instance, if you ask the qu question to students about what is your experience in the classroom, are you able to speak up, are you able, are you able to, to, to present your views in the classroom, and they say no, that it's a very politicized classroom, for instance, and then you, if you don't ask the professor what their perspective is, you're never going to be able to fix the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why we created this to these tools for everybody with similar questions. Which I really appreciate because having done a climate survey before at two previous institutions and being the uh, person that's going to create the strategic plan for diversity and inclusion from it, I really appreciated the opportunity to customize the questions right. specifically to UNT and ask each constituent the same questions because then you're really able to compare, as they say, apples to apples to apples to apples uh, and for all four of the tools. Um, so it, it's, I think it's really going to help us tremendously moving forward. Well, one of the things that I see at UNT is I know you're working on your strategic diversity plan and so many other things here. You've built an amazing foundation with programming and with the types of students and faculty that you brought in here. And now you're saying, okay, we built the foundation, now we have to go out and we have to ask everybody, what do they want to see in this house? Because mm -hmm. we want to build something that everyone's going to want to come to. So you're going out and you're not just doing it on your own and saying, well, I think everybody's going to like this. You're asking them what they're going to like. And that is a strategic way to move forward. So 
I'm very excited about the way you're doing this and the order that you're doing it in. And one of the things that I love about our tools is that they are customizable. Mm -hmm. It's not a cookie cutter survey. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna use the same survey that any other school is gonna use in this country because you shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. No two students are alike, no two people are alike, no two campuses are alike. So we really want you to customize this for your campus mm -hmm. for, for two reasons. One is you're gonna get more, more participation mm -hmm. and the second reason is you're gonna get more information. Yes. And better information. And we loved the part that we could even translate the survey into Spanish. I know right. we were the first institution to ask to do that but it's really helping us to be able to hear the voices of mainly our staff right. um, that may not, for, for whom English may not be their, their first language so that we can hear those voices as well. And there aren't a lot of other surveys that do that. Right, so I don't know of any that do. I don't know of any that are um, accommodated for people with disabilities mm -hmm. where ours are. I don't know any that have looked at the standards of accrediting agencies, which we have, to make sure that the language in our questions is similar to the accrediting agency's language for diversity so that when they come to you for reaccreditation, they say, have you done this? Have you asked that? Have you done this? You could say, yes, we use Viewfinder Campus Climate Survey and we did all that in, within the survey. So you're really solving a lot of problems mm -hmm. using Viewfinder. Um, I do love um, what you have done with the survey. I've, I've looked at it. I love the questions that you've asked and the additional questions that you've asked. And when it comes to the to the second language, it's something that we consider, but we knew it was gonna be a very time consuming effort. But as part of our mantra to be diverse and inclusive, we feel that we have to be diverse and inclusive in multiple ways, not just mm -hmm. in you know having a survey that's um, accommodating for people with disabilities mm -hmm. and, and sending it out to all of your constituents, but we also want it to be available to people to understand. So we did translate it into Spanish. We hired someone to do that, and, and I'm thrilled that we did because now we can offer it in that language. So, Absolutely. So I appreciate the feedback and, and the wonderful ideas you guys have given us. Yeah, that broad-based intentional inclusion has exactly. tried to make that a foundation, as you say, of the house. We often use a house right. as a metaphor for a lot of the things that we do, and it's really just been great to be able to say to all of our employees, students, faculty, staff, and administrators that they'll be able to weigh in on this. And, and then even the way that we developed the tool, it was really collaborative, mm -hmm. and we really appreciated Joanne Woodard's leadership in getting our cabinet um, from the entire university, at least at UNT Denton, to identify identify folks from academic affairs, from student affairs. Uh, we had a lot of faculty look at it, a lot of administrators and students mm -hmm. on the planning committee. And I think that's where you saw a lot of that customization coming in, right. is that the students were saying, well, let me think about this uh, from the perspective of a student. Correct. So it wasn't kind of paternalistic, where just a few people um, were planning this tool out. I and mean, we, we've been meeting since last fall mm -hmm. when we met with you. This is actually the first time we're meeting face to face, right. but I when know. we met with you, via Skype to kind of talk us through it. So we're thrilled. Yeah. You know, diversity on a college campus is not difficult. It's inclusion that's difficult. Absolutely. And the way that you are going about your inclusiveness, it, it's, it's, it's very impressive. And the way that you're including everyone, not only to take the survey, but to participate in creating the survey, yes. it shows your intentionality to really be not just a diverse campus, but a diverse campus, but an extremely inclusive campus. And I think they're few and far between today. Based on my experience, in higher education and I travel to schools all over the country so I really have a good feel probably more than anybody else in the country as to what's going on yes. on college campuses and um, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to come out here today to share my expertise with you and to help you move that needle forward in as many ways that I can help you. Well, and we appreciate that. And do you find that we are planning to, after we distribute the survey, uh, it's gonna be right after homecoming, October 29th through mm -hmm. November 16th. We've secured some really great um, incentives for the purposes of the survey. And we also plan on presenting the data. We're gonna be really transparent about presenting the data uh, to different colleges and to different divisions. Mm -hmm. Is that something that other institutions do where they go college to college or division to division to present the data or is this yes okay um, because you want people want to know what the results are right they want to know what you found and they want to know how you're gonna fix it whatever mm -hmm. needs fixing they want to know what you're gonna do so I usually tell schools yes do the quantitative analysis put it put your report together do a presentation to your faculty you may have to have a couple because you are a large Absolutely, institution yeah. so you may have to have one just for students you may have to have one for faculty mm -hmm. and one for staff but yes definitely show them the results and then after, before you do that though, 
I would suggest doing a qualitative analysis and saying, okay, well, here are the issues we found, now how are we gonna fix them? And have a short-term strategy and a long-term strategy. So here's what we can fix this week. Here's some small little things, don't cost us anything, and they're quick things that we can do to show that, we, that we're putting our money where our mouth is and we, mean, we don't just say what we mean, we mean what we say. Yes, yes. And then you can work up to the long-term strategies mm -hmm. because we know that diversity and inclusion doesn't happen overnight. Yes. And some things do take uh, time mm -hmm. to, to get to the point where you, um, you could say you're satisfied or things are going in the right direction. Or it even you should, exists right, in you some You should never case, be right? satisfied with, with yeah. where you are. I always say, you know, Steve Jobs was never satisfied in the products that he was creating right. or we all be walking around with those big cell phones with the antennas, <laughs> you know, or, or still calling from our cars. So he never stopped innovating. So college campuses should never stop innovating either. And we do plan to do focus groups. You know, we've got employee resource groups now that are up and running that we're planning That's to great. engage. It's been a wonderful opportunity in saying to the UNT community, we're doing this climate survey. Everybody's voice is going, going to be heard. We had a student uh, design our climate survey logo mm. uh, as part of the planning committee process. We had a student group, the American Marketing Association, design our social media process. So it's really been a great all hands on deck That's opportunity great. for students to get practical application of what mm -hmm. it is they're studying. And then even when we roll it out, um, for them to be able to say, I was involved in UNT's first ever climate survey for inclusion and we think it's going to really help to move the needle um, for getting to the being the minority and Hispanic serving mm -hmm. institution because as you know our demographics have changed seemingly overnight right. but we need to have that evidence-based data-driven right. um, that approach. approach right to addressing how do we how do we change our policies, programs, practices, and people in some cases? Right. To and I think, you know, when you receive the HEAT Award, it shows that you're doing great work, but when you do a climate survey like Viewfinder, it shows that you want to continue that work and you want to improve on that work. And that's really what the HEAT Award is about. It's not just stopping and saying, I've done, I'm do, just doing it one year, yeah. and that's it. We're not going to do anything more. You, all, you, you want, you're always improving in your academics. Mm -hmm. You're always improving in your sports program. So why not improve in your diversity and inclusion on campus? And it's been great even, too, that you know we've done the Gallup survey. We've done the coach survey, mm -hmm. which is something for faculty. And even those on our planning committee are making sure that this campus climate survey for inclusion is markedly different than right. any other survey we've done. So we appreciated having Viewfinder as the template mm -hmm. from which we can begin to ask a lot of these questions and really just look forward to working with you in distributing it and getting the results. It's, you know, as a diversity and inclusion geek, I guess I, I get mm -hmm. all giddy about uh, the idea of having having that data, but it's, we well, just Well, as really a CPA, I love data too. <laughs> I, I love numbers and, and even on the plane here today, I was looking at our HEAT Award reports and comparing our numbers from this year to last year mm -hmm. and seeing the improvement in graduation rates and more diverse mm -hmm. faculty from our HEAT schools. And, you know, data says everything. Absolutely the numbers does. numbers talk. And, and, you know, one of the things that I also notice about UNT is that your leadership is very supportive, and that means everything. If your leadership is not on board and they don't give you the resources, whether it's human or financial, you're never going to accomplish anything. And I could tell your leadership is definitely on board. Yeah, and our president, Neil Smotrask, even did a video uh, with Joanne that's on our climate survey website. Oh, that's fantastic. That is really just saying to our UNT community how important this is. Mm -hmm. And we need everyone's voice. It's like voting, right? right that you can't right. complain if you don't vote. And in many ways, this is kind of like voting right. for what we want the future of UNT right. to and be. And if they know that you are going to make changes, which you have done, obviously, in other areas, Absolutely. then they're going to be willing to participate. Well, thank you, Lenore. We're really looking forward to taking this journey with you, and thank you Great. for coming out here uh, to Denton to talk to us about the Climate Survey and the HEAT Award. We're thrilled and honored to be recipients of the HEAT Award, and hopefully this won't be our first time. We no, can well, congratulations. You guys are doing amazing work, and I hope to watch you take that journey. All right, great. Thanks, Lenore. Thank you. So thanks so much for joining here for Social Justice and Community Engagement. On behalf of UNT's Division of Institutional Equity and Diversity, we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.